Hi there. I've been thinking about all the different methods or part of my methodology and bringing them all, to, all together in one presentation like this. And um, if actually 12 different methods which you can use to attain soul awareness and um, they're quite varied and uh, some of them involve visualization some of them uh, involve uh, mantra and um, which is a sort of vibration vibrating a, a, a letter M in this case um, some of them are more complicated than others, some of them involve breathing, breathing and visualizing at the same time. Uh, we're starting at the top here really, uh, which is the um, the seven purification breaths and seven breaths of light and the uh, opening of the three centers of the body. Uh, this is a, this is visualization and breathing, so it's quite advanced really. Uh, you just have to visualize um, Three centers opening, one at the top of the head, one at the heart, uh, one below the below the the um, the Muladhara chakra or the or the crux, uh, the crutch rather, and um, these light centers open up as far as you can, and then you visualize white light coming down and penetrating each of the three centers. And then you start breathing and you breathe up and down. Uh, you visualize um, a sort of wave of white light coming up your back and flowing down the front of your body. Uh, and you do that for another six times, <clears throat> building up layers like an onion around yourself. Uh, and you can also do it the other way. You can bring white light up your right hand side and down your left and do that for seven times as well. Um, so that's uh, that's quite a nice exercise to do. Uh, I've been doing that every day, <clears throat> and I was taught that many years ago. I haven't really used it for a long, long time. Um, uh, then, uh, of course, the four holy words: "I love you, God." Uh, you can start each of your sessions with the four holy words if you want, um, and then you can, and then here's one that's you know focus on the. Personal and universal sorrow. I've covered this before. Um, uh, listening to the voice of the silence. That's another part of it. Um, you focus on uh, a sense of, of longing uh, for the Godhead. Uh, focus on a sense of returning home as well. Uh, this is the unusual one. The visualization of any object. Um, conscious visualization. And you, visual, and you sort of visualize it uh, and you imagine that there is some mysterious side to this object that you can't see. Um, and that sort of has an alluring sense of mystery uh, emanating from it. Um, so you visualize a tree, for example, and the other side of that tree is a, is a mystery. Uh, and that mystery has a, has a powerful um, sort of attract, powerful force of attraction uh, between you and it. Um, there's a visualization which I covered of a specialized uh, sigil or symbol uh, or sign, uh, which is this um, circle and, and the curve um, meeting the top of the circle like this, um, which represents uh, the return of the descent of soul into the lower worlds and its ascent back into the higher worlds again. Uh, and the lower worlds are represented by the circle, which represents uh, the everlasting wheel of samsara um, you know energy just changes its form all the time uh, and it just, just goes round and round uh, whereas the soul is on a on a particular trajectory uh, which which you which you are following uh, either consciously or unconsciously uh, or bringing it bringing it bringing the trajectory into consciousness uh, as a result of doing this visualization uh, and then there's a free visualization of uh, the backs of your eyelids. You just close your eyes uh, and you'll and just hold your eyelids relaxed. And you can see uh, a, you can see a kind of a sort of reddish 
hue, uh, a reddish glow, which is the light passing through your eyelids, uh, and, the, and the blood capillaries are shown up. Uh, and onto this sort of screen of, of kind of red, uh, deep red, um, a, a sort of red glow, glowish thing, uh, you can project uh, various uh, images and objects, um, usually in two dimensions, but sometimes three. And, uh, and, and that's a pretty good thing to do as well. Um, and then, and then you need to. Oh yes, the internal focus on the smile. I, I, I covered this before on this thing talking about frivolity and the need for joyousness, um, and it just it's sort of a smile. I suppose it's a smile of the bird, really. It's the smile of, um, you know, of acceptance as well. So you're kind of accepting the, um, uh, the world as it is. And uh, and it brings a little sort of smile, um, not exactly of irony, but um, a sort of twinkle in your eye. A smile, the inner smile, is something to uh, to focus on. And there are lots of books talk about the inner smile. I think there's even a book called The Inner Smile. I think, um, and that might be worth check checking out. Um, now this is something I haven't really covered: the vibration of of the um sound. Uh, it's actually attributed um, in magic to the element of water um, and to the hanged man in the tarot cards, uh, which is attributed to water. And uh, it's, a, a, it's a sort of clear vibration of just a sort of vibrating the mmm sound, like, you know. Um, and you can either do it out loud, uh, but the Mahanivara Tantra recommends that you start off doing the mantra out loud. Uh, and eventually you you just um, you vibrate it inwardly, vibrate it uh, sort of quietly or silently. Uh, and they say that this that mantras that are done silently are the most powerful. Um, so it's something you need to um, need to uh, develop uh, practice. Um, and then finally, we're returning to um, uh, the breath, uh, following the breath, uh, this is much easier than the seven breaths. You just breathe naturally um, and you just follow the in-breath uh, and then you follow the out-breath and make the out-breath slightly longer than the in-breath and you just do that. Um, um, and that's that's a good one to do um, if you want to follow it with the voice of the silence. Uh, although vibrating M is quite good and then uh, with what in yoga called banda, which means that um, you you sort of um, well in in yoga hatha yoga you hold a posture and then you release from it, and and it's that release uh, from holding uh, which does a, which does a, which does a trick, <laughs> which does the various um, stimulates the nadas or the or the channels of energy around the body. Um, similarly, if you make a, if you vibrate a mantra and then you go into silence. Um, the silence is very powerful. In fact, the silence sort of has a different quality about it. Uh, and you may go into silence after the vibrating of the mantra uh, and, and then listen or prepare to listen to the voice of the silence. Um, so some of these, you see, some of these methods are linked together and they can follow each other sequentially. Um, so, you know, you'd start off with, with, for example, the breath awareness and then you might vibrate the um sound uh, and then you might uh, release uh, and just follow your consciousness into the void, into the silence and listen for the voice of the silence. Um, but generally speaking, you know, you, you're at the centre uh, and you can really um, do any of these methods. Um, it, you can actually devise your own sequence uh, for these methods. Um, you can do either one at a time or, or several at a time, whatever you feel like doing really. If you feel in a visualizing mood, um, then do it. Then do the visualization exercises. If you're feeling in a, in a like you know, uh, concentrating on your breath, you can do that. Uh, there's no hard and fast rule about this. You know, you don't have to follow any sort of set guidelines. Um, these are just you know, twelve different suggestions really. Uh, I mean, you could do all twelve of them if you're really feeling keen, um, but again, you don't have to. And, and if you are going to do all twelve, you know, you have to build up slowly over months, if not years. 
you know, perfecting each one of the 12 as you go, uh, and then adding them to your sort of toolkit, as it were. Uh, but what you have here really is a bit like, you know, uh, a bit like the old artist's easel, you know, where, where, they, where they mix the colours. Uh, no, not the easel. Um, What's, what's that funny thing the artists have, you know, that kind of thing with a board thing where they mix their paints. Anyway, um, whatever that is, uh, that's, you know, you can mix and match these methods. Um, and, of course, these methods might, may suggest other methods to you as well. Uh, and you may get information about uh, uh, other methods that you could use. And, of course, you may have learnt your, your own from different masters and different schools and, and different... Uh, people that have given you information over the years, and that's okay as well. Um, so these are just 12 basic exercises. Um, and um, I put attaining soul awareness in the middle, um, because each of these methods uh, is surely a path uh, to soul awareness, each of them, um, or several of, of them together, or all of them together. Um, and, um, and if that is the case, uh, you're preparing yourself uh, to either receive the vision of the Holy Grail or to receive uh, grace from the Holy Spirit. Um, and that will have some kind of effect. Uh, really, it's very difficult to know what sort of an effect they'll have or how you will um, experience uh, the transcendental. Um, you know, or I can't say. Uh, it's, all, it's up to you. It's, it's an individual thing. Uh, nor can I say that it, that it will necessarily follow uh, from doing any of these methods. Um, and you should really just do these methods for their own sake, uh, not, for, not with any kind of purpose in mind. Uh, you have to release uh, from wanting things to happen, as it were. Uh, you just, you know, you just go with whatever the method does to you, and, and if it does nothing, that's good. If it does amazing things, that's good. Uh, you're pretty much indifferent to results anyway, really. Um, you know, results that you might you get from each method uh, have their place in the universe and have their meaning. Uh, but it's nothing to get really too excited about. <laughs> you know, um, it's just soul awareness. That's all. I say just, but it is. On one hand, it's just soul awareness, <laughs> and on the other, it's transcendence, uh, which is pretty amazing and wondrous. Um, but at the same time, it's pretty sort of commonplace and, and pretty, uh, pretty prosaic, really. Um, there's nothing, you know, to one, you know, to get too excited about. And people who get too excited about results and, and phenomena, uh, you know, are asking for it really because um, they're opening themselves up to the demiurge's agents to come along and give you all sorts of acid trips, um, which, which are pretty meaningless, but which will have the effect of distracting you or upsetting you or, or tripping you up or in some way uh, making you confused about things. So uh, again, uh, you know, don't go looking for trouble. Um, and also, if you, you think about vibrating uh, mantras and, and you know, sound vibrations are very powerful. Um, and if you do them for too long, uh, again, that can attract the wrong sort of transcendent, the wrong sort of um, wrong sort of energies to you, which are not transcendental enough. You see, uh, that's a big thing. It's not that they're hostile or or dangerous or whatever. They're just not transcendental enough. You know, they're wasting your time. Basically, they don't matter. Uh, th things which are not transcendental enough don't matter, uh, and yet they're part of the material world of the demiurge, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Um, so they matter to the demiurge, but they don't matter to you, you know. Um, so, you know, uh, obviously it's something which you can... And some people have suggested you shouldn't do any of these methods without, without having a guru. Uh, or somebody to do them in front of or with or something or do them in a group. Um, I'm not sure that that's really necessary. Um, you know, I, I think that it depends on the person. If, if you're the sort of person that has been very psychically uh, active, um, uh, then, you, then you've got a lot of holes. That, then you, then you're, you are quite vulnerable. Uh, you're more vulnerable than the person who, who has always led a basically a kind of sane life and, and, and followed external religion for that matter. 
you know, and, and are just getting into mysticism, really. And they have a kind of an innocence about them. They do these uh, exercises and, and they don't expect ghosts and blood on the walls and psychic phenomena and <laughs> I don't know what, or uh, things going bump in the night. They don't expect that. Uh, they just go into a nice, quiet, um, calm uh, mind um, whenever they feel like it. So they sort of feel calm. Uh, and then they do all these exercises and, and the, you know, it's like the cherry on the icing, so the cherry on the cake, you know. Um, but true enough, but true it is, as, as far as the yogas are concerned, they say the yamas and nayamas, you, you need to, you need to have a stable life, um, you know, you, you need to have a family life. I heard recently uh, about the study of Kabbalah. Uh, the study of Kabbalah should be only done by people who are over 14, uh, who are married and who have a full stomach, <laughs> uh, and that that's just that's quite interesting, you see, because you know it, again because Kabbalah isn't supposed to be. On one hand, it's it's wondrous and amazing results can be obtained, but on the other hand, it's it's just commonplace. You know, it's it's just it's just spirituality. There's it's nothing. There's nothing sort of, you know, like Star Wars about it. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing like Joss Whedon and Angel and Buffy and I don't know what all and vampires <laughs> and and fog and <laughs> mist and and magical stuff. It's not Harry Potter, you know what I mean? It's it's just, you know, magical things. I mean, transcendental magic is really like, I don't know, it's almost not boring, but it's it's almost, it's sort of nothing really special. It's a ground, you know, you're sort of falling and you, you know, like you jump off, I don't know, you, you jump off something and, and, you, and you hit the ground. Um, and that's the ground there, you know. You don't go on falling, you know what I mean? If, you're going on, if you go on falling, you, you've jumped off something which is too high for you. Do you know what I mean? But if you, but if you jump off something and, and you land on the ground safely, uh, that that's okay. Um, so, in a funny sort of way, transcendental mag transcendentalism is like jumping off um, something which you can easily land on. <laughs> uh, but non-transcendentalism uh, and psychism is when you jump off something and it's way, way too high, and you're falling, you're falling, and you're going to hurt yourself when you reach the bottom. Um, even though you're, and that's kind of the non-transcendental, it's, it's sort of, it, it doesn't, um, you know, it's kind of a contradiction really, isn't it? Um, but, uh, that's what I've learned over the years. Um, and, and something is like, it should be really easy and spontaneous and nice. Um, you know, like eating a cream cake or giving someone a kiss, <laughs> you know, it, it's not a big, big deal. Um, and yet, in a way, it is a big deal, you know, because it's transcendence we're talking about. Uh, and the non-transcendent uh, becomes a really massive deal. Uh, and then you can go into bad trips and, and egotism and craziness and madness and, uh, and projecting all your, I don't know, all your bad fears and all your, all your wickedness on, onto our cut projection screen. Uh, and then you've only got yourself to blame because you, you get monsters everywhere. Um, <laughs> I'm reminded of P.L. Travers, actually, who was a witch, uh, you know, and in one of the stories, uh, you know, Mary Poppins uh, takes the children uh, to the four corners of the globe, you know, and they meet the, they meet the guardians of the four elementals, actually, uh, in the story. Uh, anyway, um, and this is to amuse one of the, the little boy, and the little boy is still in a bad mood. So he gets the magic compass and he, and he says north, south, east and west. He says them all together. Uh, and all the guardians of the elements uh, come to visit him. But instead of being nice uh, and friendly mood, uh, they're all brandishing weapons at him and, and shouting at him and, and glaring at him. Uh, and, and, he's, it's like, and so he screams out, Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins. And she comes and, you know, and says, don't, don't fool around with my stuff, okay? My magic compasses are magic compasses. Don't fool around with them. So, uh, you know, um, so that's a kind of story about, you know, people that uh, get arrogant and stupid with magic. Um, and, and then they need Mary Poppins to come and 
come and sort them out, like, you know. Um, but you don't need Mary Poppins to come and sort you out because, you know, I assume uh, that you're not a silly little boy or a silly little girl uh, that wants to prove something, uh, how great they are or how, what a wonderful magician they are. Um, you've got nothing to prove, uh, basically. Um, so have fun with these methods uh, and use them spontaneously. Uh, use them in sequence, use them together, use them not together, whatever you decide to do. And, um, you know, it, all these methods are merely preparing you uh, for um, certain things to happen to you um for them to call you and not you to call them uh and when you when they have called you uh you'll be under absolutely no doubt that they have called you okay um whenever that happens and however that happens all right um you know it is like the second coming when jesus comes on a cloud <laughs> you'll be in no doubt uh, that this is happening. You won't have to take people's word for it and people sort of saying, oh, we're in the end times and uh, look for the portents, portents and, you know, and I, and I saw a four-legged horse and an uh, eight-legged horse, you know, the other day, which is just two horses by each, side by side. You know, you, you know it, so don't believe all the sort of, you know, all, all the fear mongers and, and miracle mongers out there uh, and mystery uh, mystery mongers, um, you know, they're talking rot because, you know, everybody will know the truth when the truth uh, happens on, happens upon them, <laughs> okay, um, you're walking down a path, you know, and you find something on the path, <clears throat> you're un under no doubt that you found something on the path, and you pick it up and you look at it, okay, uh, it's not somebody telling you tall tales about what they found on the path. Um, it's what you found, found, find on the path that's what matters, okay? <clears throat> so you remember that. Um, so have fun with these, um, these methods um, and use them in the spirit of fun as well uh, and because fun is better than fear uh, and fun is the real power uh, where, whereas fear is, is, is a deluded power. Um, and uh, the games that people play over you and the games that you play with yourself or based on fear will all come to nothing. Uh, they'll all end in tears. Uh, whereas fun uh, and, and innocence uh, and sincerity uh, and uh, pureness of heart uh, and pureness of, of, of motivation, those are the things that will propel you, that will best prepare you uh, for the things that may or may not happen as a result of doing these, these various methods. <clears throat>